This week on the Computer Chronicles, how to build the ultimate gaming computer. We'll talk graphics cards and show you the new NVIDIA GeForce 3. We'll talk sound cards and show you how to add stunning theater-style surround sound to your games. We'll show you what it looks like to play a game on the newest Pentium 4 chip, running at a blazing 1.7 gigahertz. And the editors of Maximum PC Magazine will show us their choice for the best overall gaming computer. How to build the ultimate gaming PC, coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by pc to pc the online computer migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Additional support is provided by Upside Events, presenting the Digital Lifestyle Revolution Conference, where people and technology intersect. Hi, and welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe. There's some very interesting marketing data on new PC purchases, which shows that most PC upgrades for consumers are driven not by the grown-ups in the house, but by the kids who want a more powerful gaming machine. Certainly, there is no more demanding application for a computer than today's graphics-intensive games. So today, we are going to help you figure out how to put together the ultimate gaming computer. And we're going to start out with graphics. And here to help us do that is Tony Tomasi of NVIDIA. Hi, Tony. Hi. All right, so you've got the brand new GeForce 3 graphics card here. And there's a million cards out there. This is new. What is different, better? It's actually next generation. If I That's exactly right. The GeForce 3 is the, the latest generation graphics processor from NVIDIA. So this product actually includes a, a 57 million transistor graphics processor. Uh, to wow. put that in perspective, that's, the, that's more transistors than a Pentium 4 <laughs> plus a Pentium 3 put together. Just on the graphics Just card. Just on the graphics processor, okay. as well as 64 megabytes of 230 megahertz DDR right. memory. But what's key about this is it's programmable, That's exactly right? right. For the first time, the graphics processor is as programmable as the CPU. We have an instruction set. Just like the Intel processors have an instruction mm -hmm. set that you can program Microsoft Word or Windows with, we now have an instruction set that game programmers can program to create special effects on our processor. So that means a game developer is not stuck saying, oh, I can only do what the graphics card will let me do. You can make the graphics card do whatever you want it to do. That's exactly right. So for the first time, really, in real time, game developers can create essentially special effects. Yeah. So what used to be the domain just of movies and special effects there, which are render farms or, and would take hours per frame, sure. We render those same special effects in real time at 60 frames right, This per is second. all about what's on the screen. So That's let's right. get to the computer here. And I want you to show me a couple of examples. First of all, in a game, I mean, you're concerned about the surfaces of things, the texture, the animation. Show us an example. You have a great example, I think, of a chameleon there. Right. So we, we came up with this idea of the chameleon to really show off the, the nature that the, because it's programmable, it can change the way it looks. Mm -hmm. So interactively, we can actually demonstrate programmability by with, with this chameleon here. So it's completely real time. I can look at it from any camera angle, any way that I'd want. Um, it's actually being so this driven. is all being generated and driven right now in That's real exactly time. That's exactly right. This, all this it's code responding to your direction. is running on the graphics processor in real time. Okay. So, so you've wireframed it, for example? The, the first thing, of course, is that the chameleon is built from, from geometry or wireframe. The animation of this chameleon, how he moves and walks right. and the skin bends over him, is done with the program. We call that a vertex shader. Okay. That's a piece of code that runs on our graphics processor that drives the way he animates. Um, in addition to that, of course, we have the way that he looks. Wow. Um, and so we have a variety of what we call pixel shaders to generate special effects that are on the surface of this creature. And so interactively, we can create essentially the predator look where he's actually semi-transparent. Right. He actually refracts the ambient light around him and yet still reflects it, you know, or, or bends it into and, the And again, to be clear, this is no cutscene here. I mean, this is, you are running this. That's right. right. If, you, if you look at my hand yeah. and you look at the mouse as I move it around, it's completely interactive. Yeah. Um, we can play with this as we see fit. And if you look at, well, this is actually our, uh, uh, our, uh, Invisible Man shader right, to kind of give you right, an idea what the skeletal yeah. system and, and the vein system look like. We'll go ahead and let the, the chameleon continue walking here. We'll talk about some of the shaders. So as we get close, hmm. we'll go ahead and zoom in on the surface of this guy. And if you look, just say on the, on the joints of his, yeah. of his arm there, the bumps are correct. The way the specular highlights move yep. across the bumps as he animates are all completely correct. All right. Now, I want, I want you to go to the next demonstration. Another thing in a game is the, is the landscape, the background, the environment. They're often sort of clunky and dull, and they don't really get you into the game emotionally. And you have the ability now to actually generate real-time landscapes too, right? That's exactly right. Because the, the processor is programmable, we can actually program the processor to procedurally generate a world. So the advantage here is that where previously worlds would have an end. You could get to the end of the texture or the end of the geometry okay. and that so was So again, it. this is a real-time generation of this landscape. Right. If you, if you look, notice the mouse as I pan it towards the edge of the screen, that's the direction that I fly. Mm -hmm. And I'm flying around the world. I can get close to the landscape. I can fly up in the air. 
The other nice thing about this, the world being is completely generated, but we've got so much graphics processing power that we can actually have a little bit of fun. So wherever I click on the screen, we have a meteor wow. come flying down, and the meteor does some interesting things. As he clicks and lands, you notice there's that ripple, mm -hmm. that shock yep. wave. We do that with a vertex shader. It's actually taking the geometry underneath and deforming it. And again, you're running this right now. It's, on not, the just, it's not just happening. That's the all last real thing time. I want you to, to show us is the hardest thing in a game is the human face, right? That's exactly right. I mean, right. there's so much su subtlety in, in the different expressions. Most games, the faces are pretty boring. You never right. get to know them, right? You have a demonstration here, which is just incredible in what you can do with this card. Yes, we, we wanted to create, to, to solve the problem, or at least attack the, the problem of creating some emotional yep. conveyance in a character. Today's game characters are kind of blockheads. Right, they have right, right. You know, flat faces, maybe moving textures, and yeah. typically plastic okay, hair. So what do we no have hair. here? Zoltar. So we've got Zoltar, which is actually Zoltar, kind of modeled after the Zoltar character from Tom Hanks movie Big. He's a fortune teller, and it's I a completely interactive face. I can view him in wireframe. Or not. Yeah, but go back. Let, let's see the motion around his. When he talks, I mean, the, you can see right. his skin stretch. We'll, we'll move into his face a little bit here. Mouth, get yeah. nice and close, and, and we'll go ahead and fire up an animation here. And you notice that what we can do is program the graphics it processor to deform his actual skin. Yeah. We've modeled the skeletal structure and the muscular structure of his face as programs. We download those to our graphics processor, and we can animate them and move them around entirely in real time. Mm. So for the first time in real time, you, you can get, get human characters. Wow, this is something that even the movie industry has really just started trying to tackle, mm. and now we're running it in real time on a graphics OK, processor. so it's NVIDIA's GeForce 3, and it'll exactly cost right. me how much? About $3.99. All right, thanks a lot. Great, thanks a lot. Stuart. All right, well, once you have a killer graphics card in your computer, the next most important element for a great gaming machine is sound. There are many sound cards and systems out there to choose from. Here to tell us about one high-end option is Scott McNeese of Philips. How are you doing, Scott? Great. Okay, now we have to explain. It's pretty hard to demonstrate this on television because yes. most people are listening to you know, some little monaural clunky speaker on a TV set probably. So they're going to have to trust us a little bit. Right. So l let's talk about what's the big deal about your new sound card, which is what, the acoustic edge. Edge, okay. Yes. What's do it's a new generation card, too. Why? Yes, well, basically what we set out to do is when you're in, you know, how great it is if you're sitting in a movie theater with really nice Dolby Digital or DPS right. sound system and you're surrounded by sound, so you just really, really get immersed in it and enjoy it. Well, we want to be able to create that same experience on the PC. The problem on the PC is most of the sounds you hear, music, even most uh -huh. of the sounds in games, are not positional or not 3D. At best, it's just stereo sound, right? Exactly. So we came up with a solution in terms of our Thunderbird Avenger chip that we developed mm -hmm. and the algorithms that we put on it. Um, that basically allow us to take any stereo sound and create multi-channel sound, that is four or 5.1 channels of sound, just like in the theater, so it surrounds right. you. So even though the game itself is only pushing, say, stereo sound, two-track sound, you can somehow put an algorithm on top of that and pull that apart into five different channels, so I really have surround sound. Exactly. In fact, there's two different cases there. There's some games that have no positional sounds at all, right. and those will make that game all of a sudden a positional 3D or a hmm. surround sound game. But even those games that are coming out now that do use positional 3D, they'll only take a portion of the sounds and actually position them, and everything right. else will be stereo so or mono. you can mono. actually put more in the game that, than that was in there in the first place. Yes. This algorithm. Additional layers of surround yeah. sound, if you will. You have a nice little demonstration here, Active. You can show us that sort of visual representation right. of the way you break up the sound. Yes. Uh, this is an MP3 player that's included, and there's going to be a visual here. I'm going to start it up. And first, actually, we're going to start it in stereo. And you see these two little visuals here. That corresponds to a left and right speaker. Okay, so that's the two tracks that are sort of pushing out the sound right now. Right, exactly. Now, I'm going to go so that to That would four. be our typical stereo environment. Exactly. Now I've gone to four speakers, and this shows... Now, how did you go to four speakers? You just told your card, I want four. Exactly. I said, let's assume we have a four speaker okay. set up with this, and let's go to four. And if you look at this, you can see the two front left and right and the left rear and right rear are very different signals, and you can actually hear it. So all of a sudden, you're hearing different sounds from every speaker. Right. Now we're going to take it a step further. Let's say you're, you have a 5.1 channel sound system. And you'll see the additional channels added now by our, our card. And you said 5.1. What's the work? How's the tenth of a yeah. channel? Yeah, it's actually terminology that comes from movies, uh, DVD and DTS. The point one is a low frequency effects channel. For, okay. It's very, it uses basically a subwoofer to do that. And that's that center channel right there. And this right. one right here is the center channel, which is also added. And that makes the vocals in a song or the vocals in a, in a game or a movie come out very clearly from the front of you, while other sounds will come from sure. all the different surrounds. All right, so we're talking about gaming here. So I want you to pull up a game just as a demonstration here. I think you have a game Forsaken up there, which is one of those games with lots of stuff going on around you. And it'd be great to have the sort of five-dimensional sound you're talking about. Absolutely. It, it, it's, just, it's like have, playing with a whole new game all over again. If yeah. you've been listening to it in stereo, 
and you listen to it this way. Yeah, this game actually came out a few years ago from right. Probe, um, and it's put, put out by Acclaim Entertainment. A very, very popular, very good game. Graphics were excellent. Um, but it's a good example of, of a very good title, but that is uh, stereo only. So uh, let me explain again. We've got five speakers around us here, so I mean, we were, there's no way we can just translate that through the television set. But I mean, just go through the game and actually explain what's going on in terms of the, the spatialness of the, of the action. Okay. You know this game? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. okay. This, is actually, this is actually a yeah. demo. For right. I'm not going to ask you to This play. is a pre recorded session. This is true gameplay, but it's a pre recorded session. It's going to start up in a moment. And what would happen if you had another sound card product that did support four or five right. point channels is what they do is if they only have stereo, they play the same thing out of the rear channels or the front channels. Okay. So, so you're it, not getting more. It, it, you don't get anything more, more and it can more realism out of it. It's almost the equivalent of playing mono out of a set of yeah, stereo yeah. speakers. It's still mono. mono tracks, right. yeah. So as you're going along here now in this spacecraft and you're firing, because of this algorithm basically creating the 5.1 channels, all of a sudden the explosions. So we can hear it behind us, in front of us, to the left, to the right, so you're really immersed in the game. Yes, all this, it's almost like an interactive movie. And with the graphics you were just talking about, you, the combination of the graphics and the really? audio really yeah. can make it an interactive movie and experience that you can really escape into, absolutely. All right, now, uh, while we continue to look at this, one, one question. If I look at my computer in the back, I've got one little jack you know, to plug in the speaker. And you've got five or six speakers going. How do yeah. I do that? Okay, yeah. Well, when, on our sound card, we actually have a special adapter. So we only okay, take we up the We do have a card here, actually. So this, yeah. this is what, what we have here. This top jack here, it's called a DIN-style jack. And it right. comes out and actually gives you three stereo jacks. So you get all okay. six channels, the five-point channels. The second one here actually allows you also digital in and out. So you can also do digital interface with things. And you can even pass AC3 or DTS information if you have a surround okay. processor externally. Okay. Now, last question. Uh, the card's great. You need great speakers to go with it. You have some interesting technology there. I want to ask you first of all about this guy over here, which is your Wux speaker. What, what is, what's the new technology inside here? Yes, it's a technology we actually developed. We actually uh, make speaker technology for a number of the car manufacturers around the world. And the problem there is when you get into these high-end sound systems, you want a really big base. But you don't have the space for it. Exactly. And because basically with a subwoofer, the bigger the box, the bigger the uh, sound yeah. you can get out of it. So what we've done is this has a down firing uh, driver that you can't see on the bottom of this. It's the active driver. But this is the key to the technology. It's mm. a very uh, a membrane that so can move very far. Big time mega bass coming out of the small box. It basically it fools it into thinking the box is much bigger gotcha. than it really is. Uh, briefly, how much is it going to cost me to set up this sound system? Okay. Well, the card itself, the one we're showing yeah. here, is $99.99, but okay. we actually have, we're introducing two new products. We'll actually take a four channel all the way down to $49.99. Gotcha. Um, in terms of the speaker systems, we have four and 5.1 channel speaker systems starting at $80, mm. and this one here okay. going up to $199. Thank you very much. All right, coming up next, the new Pentium 4 chip. How much better will your game run on a 1.7 gigahertz CPU? We'll see in just a moment. Well, you can have the best graphics and sound cards in your computer, but underneath it all, you still have to be able to process the bits fast enough to drive everything. So how important is the speed of your CPU to great gameplay? Well, let's find out now from Tim Thraves of Intel. Hi, Tim. How you doing? And your new bit is the P4, the Pentium 4, obviously. And yep. you've got, what, a 1.7 gigahertz chip we're going to look at here. Yep, we're at speeds up to 1.7 gigahertz on okay. the Pentium 4. Now, we hear that a game's been optimized for the P4. What does that mean to me? Well, bottom line, it's going to be better or faster gameplay, but um, that could show in terms of more realistic environments, smooth gameplay and animation. Uh, basically, it's writing to the advances that you see in the Pentium 4 processor yeah. today. All right, you have a couple of examples here. Let's take a look at some games to sort of demonstrate yeah. the, the things you're talking about. This is a game called Giants, and what should we pay attention to here that we say is, hey, is the result of running this thing on a really fast processor? Sure, so some of the things you definitely look at first is the trees. Notice how they're actually blowing in the wind. Yeah, that's um, cool. You know, this is definitely something that in older prior generations you wouldn't see. It would have been a static mm -hmm. tree that you mm -hmm. don't see at all. Okay. You see the realistic lighting effects. You see that the water looks pretty realistic compared to water of a couple of years ago. And the, the, mo the motion of the character there is pretty smooth. Yeah, and you can also see different camera angles of the actual player. So mm -hmm. let's look around and see if we can see some other creatures here. And obviously you can have a lot of stuff going on at the same time. Absolutely. That's the key is, especially when you're playing online games right. with multiple players, smooth gameplay, 
Yeah, no okay. drop for him. All right, let's go to another one. You have another game up here in the in the other drive, which is called Cullen McRae Rally. This is a racing game, and that is probably the most demanding kind of game, right? Because you've got a lot of stuff changing very quickly. Absolutely one. And if them. it's not realistic, it's a waste of time. Absolutely. And this is uh, one of the newest games out there. Again, this has been optimized for the Penning 4 okay. processor. So what you're going to see is, again, smoother animation, very realistic gameplay. Um, one of the coolest things is that, you know, when you get damage on the car, uh -huh. it actually looks like damage. It just okay. doesn't Now, another it. issue in a game like a racing game is there's, there's physics realism, right? I mean, you want the thing to work the way things really work in the real world, and that's a function of what you can do with the processor. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's see if we can get a uh, fun game on here. Let's see, we'll play in Sweden. Get the 10,000 choices here. <laughs> Yeah, Track multiple choices in terms of what you can do. All right, so we're, we're racing in the snow here. Right, so what we can do here is you know, And it's laying down tracks in the snow, so that's pretty cool right there. And just to prove it is, let's, that's not my normal driving style. <laughs> so what you're going to do here is, again, this is a pretty realistic game in terms of just driving it, you know, as you're driving on snow, it, it, it's not just turning. Gotcha. And so you want, when, you, when you crash, which of course everybody wants to do in a racing game, you're going to see the real dents in the bumps. Absolutely. Like so the other thing to notice is here is you can also look at it at different camera angles. And depending on which angle that you're more comfortable playing with. Yeah, that, that's a good point. If you get at this angle, this is really more demanding on the CPU, isn't it? Absolutely, because everything's much closer. Sure. Faster. And but it's too. still going very smooth. Especially All right, I want, I want to get another game in here so you can stop that. And let me change CDs for you because there's Great. one other example, a game called Sac. Can I pop it? Absolutely. Uh, a game called Sacrifice, which is really a good example of, of a new feature you've got in the P4, so let's get this baby up. Absolutely. So again, Sacrifice was one of the first applications really to appear optimized for the Pending 4 back in uh, the end of last year. So let's start this up. Now what we're going to see here while, while we get the game up is, is that the problem with a game often is you see an object in there and as you get closer to it, it gets pixelated, it gets worse, it degrades. Absolutely. And you're now able to actually not only stop that, but reverse it. Absolutely. And one of the technologies in this application is a technology that's called multi-resolution mesh. Uh -huh. And what it does is, is exactly as you described. As you get closer to objects, instead of pixelating, it actually becomes clearer and crisper, which uh -huh. is what you would expect in the real world. All right, so let's get into this let's game. Let's load up here. a game here. Multi. So a game's called Sacrifice. Oh, yes. Yeah, from Shiny Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And what you're going to see here is right away we're loading it up into a scene that's very uh, high mm -hmm. resolution, lots of things going on. Oh, yeah. See. There's rain, many, several different things flying okay, Now, around. find an example of this sort of MRM bit where we can get close yeah. to something and see it get more detailed rather than degrade. Right, so let's take a look at either of these, these documents over here. What we're going to do is we're going to walk as we get closer to these environments. So even the tree, as we see, we actually yeah. got close to the tree, we saw more, more graininess yeah, in there exactly. rather than less in terms of the, the roots and so on. Right, so you see right there, you can actually see that. Uh -huh. It's yeah, much yeah, closer yeah. and better as you get closer to the object, which right. is actually exactly opposite from what previous exactly. generations game were able to do. All right, do. last question I, I would have for you, Tim, is we hear the numbers, you know, 1.7 gig versus yeah. whatever. Say I've got a 500 megahertz Pentium 3 right now. How much faster will I, how much better performance will I really get out of it? It's obviously not going to multiply by three or four, am I? Sure. Um, what you're going to notice is that in most applications, especially gaming, yeah. you're going to see anywhere from two to three X of the types of performance. Well, for example, in one application we know for sure, uh, in Quake 3 Arena, we're seeing about a three to four X uh, performance gain. And yeah. just going from a Pentium 3 gotcha. 500, which gives okay. you about 50 frames per second, yeah. On the latest 1.7 gigahertz Pentium 4, you're getting almost over 200 frames per second. Tim, thank you very much. Well, you may think this is just all too complicated. Upgrade this, upgrade that. Maybe the best solution for a great gaming computer is just go buy one. We're here to give us some advice on the ultimate gaming PC. Our Will Smith and Gordon Ung, they just wrote an article, in fact, for their magazine, Maximum PC, about the great gaming computers that you can put together out there. Let me ask you, first of all, Will, we've got two machines over here. That is a Falcon Northwest. Yes. This is an Alienware. Just explain what's the big deal about going to a company like Falcon that specializes in putting together gaming computers. Well, Falcon is a is a bunch of gamers that, that basically they, they play games and build computers. So okay. um, when you call and say, hey, I play Microsoft Flight Simulator or I play Quake 3, then they know exactly how to tailor a system to fit your gaming needs. All right, so you've already got your games. You know, this is what I want to play. Make me a computer. Put together some hardware right. that'll give me the best possible game experience? Exactly. Huh. exactly. Now, what is it about it, though? I mean, uh, one thing we can see is a lot of fans blowing in this thing. In fact, we can hear them. 
Uh, that's so if you want to mess around with the clock speed of your processors. You can overclock your video card right. uh, you know, a couple of notches to get it, that extra five frames a second right. or your processor, whichever you see fit. They had more than sufficient cooling for, for okay. everything. And what particular system. graphics card do we have in this one? This is the Hercules Prophet 3, which is a GeForce 3-based video card um, with programmable pixel and vertex shaders okay. and, and all that cool stuff. Now, there's a strange green monster over here from Alienware. Is this just like cool style, Gordon, if you want this to be? Well, I think for the Alienware, and also for the Falcon, pe gamers are hardcore PC people. They right. want they want people to know that they have pride in their ride. They don't want a Ford Taurus beige box. <laughs> they want you know a, a Dodge Viper. You got to so. stand out. Got to stand out. You bring that to a party, or a LAN party, which yeah. a lot of game people do, and people are going <laughs> to give you some looks. Yeah, and we don't have the monitor here, but the monitor is green, the keyboard is green, the mouse is green, the speaker is green. It's it's a different look. All right, let's go to the performance of this thing over here, if we could. Well, we have a couple of demonstrations up here. First of all, the game called Black and White. I want you to run the game off the Falcon and show us what is it uh, about the game that demands a lot from the hardware. Well, if you look at this game, it's a, it's a god-type simulator game. Um, you can see everything, manage everything from the island level, you know, this huge 500-acre mm -hmm. island, all the way down to the individual people on the, in the villages on the island. So we'll zoom in and take a look at, the, at the, the villagers here. And here's the nursery area of the village with all of our people in it. Each of these people is, I think, 800 polygons, somewhere around, around and there. And a lot of them running around. There's a lot of different things going on at once. It's exactly. all relatively smooth. The detail's pretty good. Exactly. So, I mean, again, if you're the hardcore gamer, you want the realism, you want the frame rate, you want just everything to be home. absolutely maxed out. All right, now you have another example, which is even better than that one. It's sort of a, a benchmark test of a sort of scene that is just really incredible in terms of what you can get, get out of an optimized game machine and pull that one up. Exactly. Well. This is from 3D Mark 2001. It's the nature demo. And it's basically, it's a DirectX 8 game. Mm -hmm. It requires a DirectX 8 compatible accelerator like the GeForce 3. And it, it's what we can expect to see from games in the next year or two. Yeah, I mean, it's, this looks like you're looking at a movie. I mean, an HDTV movie in a way, That's right? It. I mean, oh, certainly, certainly. It uses all the pixel and vertex shader effects um, that the GeForce 3 offers to do lighting on the water, as well as um, some interesting effects with the trees. You know, let me ask you about the trees, if we can see another scene. I mean, we see the leaves waving, all the branches going in different directions. I mean, it looks so realistic. What's it take to do that? Well, the cool thing about the trees is that the leaves are two-sided polygons, which means that each side of, the, of one polygon is textured with a different texture, uh -huh. as opposed to the old way of doing it, which is put one texture on a polygon and slap another polygon on the other side to, to, to texture it. And that lets the light shine through the trees and the leaves on the trees and look realistic. Yeah, so, so you get, I mean, the real life-like experience. You put together the yeah. graphics, put together the sound, you got a real game package. going. Yeah. Now, would it, does it cost me more to do something like buying a Falcon or an Alienware? Um, I think this Falcon is right around $3,500, which is a little bit more than a comparable What Dell. kind of processor? Uh, this is an Athlon 1.3 okay. gigahertz processor. Um, but it, you get you get a lot more service with the with this. So if you call up in the middle of the night and you're having trouble with your game, these guys are going to say, "Whoops, we don't deal with games." No, they'll know no, what you're talking about. They'll know about. exactly what you're talking about. They'll say, "Oh, well, to get Quake 3 yeah. to run, then gotcha. you, here's what you need to do." All right, Gordon. Last thing I want to talk to you about is this laptop over here. Uh, if you use a laptop, you're kind of stuck when it comes to playing right, real right. games, right? Because you just can't support it. What, this is a Dell Inspiron 8000. What is it about this machine? You say this is the only laptop you could really play a game like Quake 3 on. Right. The, the reason this Inspiron is so great is because it's one of the first notebooks out with uh, GeForce to go. Yeah, let me, is, let me just sort of run, run it here a little bit so we can see what's going on. Which is basically a little brother to the GeForce 3. So the big deal is it's got the big-time graphics card in there, so right. you can really look at a game like Quake. It also has a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3 processor in the notebook. Okay. This notebook is probably faster than most of the machines that were made last year. So you might get better gameplay off this laptop than you could off a lot of desktops right now. Right. Because of the combination of that graphics card, CPU, etc. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, it's worth going out there and buying a real gaming PC if you're a gamer. Certainly. Thank you, guys. All right, that's our look at building the ultimate gaming computer. Don't go away. I'll be back in just a moment with my tip of the week. Now for my pick of the week. I used to travel with a small portable CD player. Nice to have some music with you on the road, especially if you don't have time to rip your CDs and organize your MP3 player. But that's all it did, play music. Now I have discovered this little gem from Sony called the Digital Relay. It's about the same size as my old CD player. It weighs less than a pound, but this is more than a CD player. It is a battery-operated CD burner that can burn CDRs 
or CD-RWs. It's more than a traditional CD player. It can also play CDs with MP3 files on them since it comes with an integrated MP3 decoder. That means with just one MP3 CD, you can carry around up to 11 hours of music. The digital relay comes with a nice suite of software for burning and organizing your CDs. It also includes software that makes it easy to use the drive for data backup or as a portable storage device with infinite capacity. What's really cool about this is you can easily burn a presentation CD for a client while you're on the road with photos, music, videos, whatever, and you're not carrying around much more than you would with a plain old CD player. The digital relay comes with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery that lets you burn two hours on a single charge, and since it can record at 4x speed, that's the equivalent of burning eight hours of music on one charge. And it features an 8-meg memory buffer, so you can record reliably even off a slower computer that connects to your PC through the USB port. It's called the Digital Relay from Sony. It works with a Windows PC or a Mac and costs is under $400. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. Thanks so much for joining us. If you have any questions about anything you saw on this week's show, please check out our website at computerchronicles.org. Hope to see you here again next week. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by pc to pc the online computer migration service from PC First, moving files, applications, and preferences from your old computer to your new one. Additional support is provided by Upside Events, presenting the Digital Lifestyle Revolution Conference, where people and technology intersect. To purchase a videotape copy of today's program, call toll-free 1-888-310-7850. Please specify the show number and the topic. Next week on the Computer Chronicles, the battle between the PC and the TV. We'll show you how to surf the net on your television set using AOL TV. We'll demonstrate the coolest new box from Microsoft called Ultimate TV. We'll show you the future of e-commerce. It's on your television set. And remember the Mosaic web browser? It's now the Mosaic Navigator on your television set. And the future of entertainment on the web? We'll show you TV quality movies on your PC. The battle between the PC and the TV, next week on the Computer Chronicles.